All right, you heard a lot lately about how Donald Trump is not a big fan of the press. Uh, that might have come up once or twice, and given some of the press headlines I've, I've seen and been reading to this minute on Donald Trump, I can kind of understand where he's coming. Connell McShane is at the Trump Tower, media research founder Brent Bozell, and Heat Street political ed editor uh, Jillian Melcher. Now, a lot of what he does, Connell, when he meets with people, he... Um, he doesn't say anything. The, the media is left to try to figure out on its own if a recognizable face goes in or out, uh, like Bill de Blasio coming out and speaking before a microphone. But by and large, none of this is pre-announced, right? No, it's not. And a lot of that's fine. No. I mean, in the way that they're operating is nothing necessarily different from the way other political campaigns operate. We've got people worked up. and. Um, is the breaking of protocol last night when Trump went out to dinner with his family. He just went down like four or five blocks from here uh, to have dinner, but he uh, dismissed the pool of reporters that are assigned to cover him. And that, I know people watching at home say, wow, big deal. Who cares whether the media can follow him around? But that um, is a big deal to some extent because there's a reason there's a pool of reporters assigned to the president, the president-elect. You know, God forbid something happens or there's some sort of a major uh, crisis in the country. You want to know, A, is the president-elect okay? And, uh, you know, B, what does he think of it? What is he doing? So uh, that's, I think, the thing that got members of the media upset. The other stuff is uh, kind of run-of-the-mill, uh, regular press candidate or, in this case, president-elect uh, relations. You know, you know uh, Brent, I was looking through past presidents and picking um, their cabinets are going through their staffing issues and I uh, because I thought wow Trump is really way behind the curve here he's actually ahead of it um, but you never know uh, now I don't know when he'll finally have a cabinet selected or for that matter who all the principal players will be but historically he's actually running a little bit ahead Oh, you know, I'm just loving this, Neil. I'm just loving this. All this talk, I read the headlines about how he is not, Trump is not being transparent. Um, we just got done. We're finishing with uh, uh, eight years of an administration that said it would be the most transparent in history that did nothing but hide information from the American people. The media never cared about the fact that we've never gotten to the bottom of Benghazi. They never cared about what happened with the IRS that's never been resolved. They never cared about the VA scandals. They never cared about Fast and Furious. They don't care that Hillary Clinton destroyed 33,000 emails. They don't care about the Clinton Foundation. But by gum! By gum, Trump didn't tell them he was going out to dinner last night. This is awful. This is awful. <laughs> I've got to tell you, Neil, I've been laughing all day. All right. And what's the 21 Club? All right, for God's sake. Um, Jillian, what, what do you make of all of this and whether, you know, part to, to Connell's point a little earlier, uh, I don't think he'll be able to do this kind of as president of the United States because we do yeah. have to know where the president is. God forbid something were to happen to him. It, it's not as if we... Uh, or, you know, can be tuned out. But where does he draw the line? Where does the media draw the line? Does it draw a line? Because yeah. I have a feeling he's going sure. to redraw that line. Well, I mean, he's, he's had a lot of rhetoric about how the media is rigged against him. And I think when you see an uproar about something like this, this is a growing pain with a new administration. I mean, should he have told them? Yeah, probably. Did it feel a little bit dishonest? Will he have to do better in the future? Yeah, he needs to be a bit more transparent. But I think when you've got the media focusing so hard on him going out to dinner with his family, um, that furthers his narrative, and, and that's a narrative that just hasn't been true. I mean, if you look at the amount of earned media coverage he's gotten, BuzzFeed had a piece today about how all five media networks had been uh, making concessions to him that were unprecedented, uh, down to how he was shot on television. So I think uh, with, with that in mind, this plays into what he's telling his red meat voters. You know, Connell, were you getting any word that, that a President Trump would hold fewer press conferences or routinely go over the heads of the media? to go directly to the people. He's a great tweeter. Apparently, he's going to maintain that Twitter account. Um, how will he deal with communicating his word? Well, he's already doing it, you know, directly today with the New York Times attacks. He obviously didn't like the lead story in the, in the Times about his uh, transition supposedly right. being in chaos and being characterized that way and went right after the Times. So I would assume he'll still be direct. I mean, that's a way for him to talk to his supporters and to the American people directly. And I think what was said is right. I mean, this is... The, growing pains and the idea maybe doesn't seem like a big deal the going out to dinner thing understand that that probably will all change and we probably won't see anything like that again but i think your point that you brought up is probably the larger point of the day is that we we're in a normal process here of a transition. We haven't heard any cabinet appointees yet. Well, we normally don't. I mean, uh, George H.W. Yeah. Bush, I think, was the exception to the rule, and he was sitting vice president taking over. Most president-elects don't 
make these type of announcements four or five, maybe even six weeks after the election. So all this is fairly normal with maybe one or two exceptions. You know, Brennan, it might be collective guilt on the part of the media. They never really were big fans of him. Maybe to, to you know, Jillian's point, they kowtowed to some of the things he wanted uh, and, and weren't given the scrutiny, uh, whatever, uh, it, that now they're going to make up for that. Well, they sure, they sure aren't making up with it with their attacks on Steve Bannon. You know, I've been hearing for the last two days about how Donald Trump hired a white supremacist who is a anti-Semite and, a, you know, on and on it goes. All you have to do right now, anybody yeah. who's listening to me, Google Steve Bannon and any one of those accusations, you won't find one lick of evidence, yet the media are all piling on. CNN and everyone else is piling on. No, they're not giving yeah. a fair shot here. You know, Jillian, finally, mm -hmm. it's an interesting New York Times headline right now uh, that uh, Donald Trump's uh, transition in disarray as Democrats widened the tent to bring more players in, ignoring the fact that Democrats still haven't resolved what they're doing in the House. They had to delay votes on that. And as we said, historically, by just time periods, uh, th this transition is not running late or at all odd. Look, I think this is a, definitely a legitimate thing to cover, and there are going to be many of them. I mean, if you look at some of the reporting that's been done in the past couple of days about the potential conflicts of interest, um, I think media did a great job of covering how the Clinton Foundation posed conflicts of interest to an incoming president. I think the Trump Organization is also going to need some hardcore scrutiny. Um, the reaction right. that a lot of the media is having right now, though, with, with Trump's transparency, I think is reflective of how he handled it with two dozen different media outlets having their press credentials revoked. So I think he well, needs to be Yeah, that. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, guys, I want to thank you very, very much.